Greetings, Tony from Old River Hard Goods again. Today we're going to take a look at some handsaw sharpening vices. A few of them manufactured, a couple of them user crafted. So, sit back and enjoy. And here we have an assortment of handsaw sharpening vices. There are a lot of different styles out there, but these are the only three that I currently have in stock. So let's just take a quick look at them and see where we're going. First off is this one. This is a earlier Henry Diston number two, as it says. This uses a lever to work the jaws. As a pivot, so you can change the angle that you're working on, and of course the bench clamp. It's a pretty solid tool. This one I cleaned up a little bit, didn't go too crazy on. I'll tell you, you don't find too many of these guys around anymore. Next up, we have a folding or traveling saw vise. This one's made by Stearns, it's a model number 500. And this one's got a clamp that conveniently folds out of the way so you can stash it away in your toolbox and work on your saws as needed. Style here uses a lever. Uh, unlike the other vices, this one has a, either, a, I think it's a piece of leather or hard rubber on the inside to help grab the saw with. And these are pretty handy. They're usable. But unfortunately, they're just not as popular for the buying public anymore. And here we have a Stearns Patton one that's kind of neat. This uses a cam lock, but it has a, a swivel joint on it. Those work pretty well. And, you know, you, again, I keep repeating myself, but some of this stuff is really getting hard to find. The one on the right is a, a fairly common saw set made by a number of makers. I've seen them by Sergeant Stearns, and I think even Distant made one similar to that. Simple lever lock, simple, simple bench clamp, um, but for, for doing a quick job, it's very handy. And last, we have this beast here, which I believe is a Distant number one, although Stearns and Sergeant made similar ones. This one uses a ball and socket, and, and I never noticed that before, but this one was repaired at some point. The, uh, which is why I probably haven't cleaned it yet. Uses a screw to clamp the blade. And things to watch out for, of course, are repairs. That one looks pretty solid, but it's going to affect the overall value of the piece, not to mention all the paint and stuff on it. The jaws, as you can see, they kind of get nicked up a bit for file marks, but as long as they're not too deep, uh, shouldn't be a problem. Sorry about all the truck noise out there. like a freaking parade some days anyways sometimes you can take a file and dress them down a little bit if it gets to be too much of a problem or just you know keep the saw up away from the edge of the vise but that and just make sure that the jaws close up yeah get one of those one-handed deals just want to make sure that they close up fairly tight and flush this one's off just a hair, but again, I'm doing this one-handed, so probably it'll work all right. So, and of course, digging into things in the shop that haven't seen the light of day in probably a decade or so. This is a user-made wooden saw sharpening vise. This one handles some big saws. I mean, you could use this one on cross-cut saws. Uses a cam lock down here at the bottom. Sorry about the lighting. To lock it. Of course, it was bolted on the workbench. Definitely didn't want this guy escaping. Again, you do see these around from time to time, but I've kind of swore off buying them since they're nearly impossible to ship again. 
Here we have another wooden saw sharpening vise. This one's kind of a simple arrangement. Just uses a got a hand forged screw and a nut on it. And the um, there's a hinge down inside which you can't see because of my eyes. There we go. Wooden jaws. Again, this was bolted to a workbench and. This one would actually work for both uh, straight saws and the older circular saws. This one I could ship with some cussing, but looks like there was a second. Either the bolt could be moved up tighter or, yeah, that's probably how they did it, depending on the size of saw you were working on. So, kind of a neat design. Probably clean up pretty well, get rid of some of the paint and dust, but hey, that's why they call it patina. And that's all on the vices for right now, folks. There's a lot more to cover, and one of these days I'm going to have to start digging into the world of saw sets as well. But now it's time for this week's flea market finds, and there are some good ones in there. On Saturday, I took a trip down to the Forks of the Delaware Historic Arms Gun Show held down in Allentown, PA. I went down looking for some goodies for my AR-15, but didn't find anything, but I managed to snag a few things to sell. Got a nice, nice hand-forged early divider. Buck Brothers, eighth of an inch. Sash mortising chisel, needs a little work and a handle, of course. Bullet mold, about the only one I could afford there. Measures out around 0.47. I'll have to double check that. A few 1875 Springfield trapdoor gun tools, and this one, which I don't know if this is Civil War, maybe a little later, but it's another gun tool. So, not a big load, but helps pay for the gas. Sunday's flea market, where it was a balmy 21 degrees Fahrenheit out, produced a few items, nothing really great. Uh, big hand forged flat sweep gouge, an old blacksmith's buggy wrench, a Starrett number 18A automatic punch with an extra tip in the original box, a set of Heller Brothers needle files, Small hammer, the paint's kind of bashed up on it, and that's going to need some work. Uh, Stanley uh, bevel square, it's going to need a lot of work. Uh, really early cobbler's hammer head, unfortunately that one's been due to mill a few times as well. A pair of shoal horn, uh, I believe these are for fastening buttons, but they're a specialty plier, they need some cleaning. Neatest thing is this brass based machine surface gauge. That'll clean up nice. Uh, an orphan stone mason's chisel and an orphan center point bit. Well, I just clean them up, put them in the boxes, and when I get enough to make a set, I sell them. Uh, kind of unusual uh, chairmaker's hollow auger. I don't recall seeing one with uh, two screws on each blade. And it looks like the tang was made to unscrew, or that's how they just fit it in the cylinder. I don't know. We'll see what shows up once this guy's cleaned. And a neat little user-crafted outside caliper. Again, not a super pile, but well, a little volume's better than nothing. Well, we're going to do a quick one on this time because there's a lot to cover, but... This is the pickings from my Wednesday market. And let me tell you, it was quite a load. I mean, stuff was turning up left and stuff was turning up right. So, quick walk through. Got a French scrub plane iron. A signed uh, Lancashire pattern outside caliper. C.S. Osborne leather punch. Funny looking small hammer. It almost looks like it's brass, but I can't tell for sure. It is handles a little bent, but that is kind of neat. Let me get these out of the way quick. All right. Leather all. I buy these, clean them up, sell them in pairs. Always need them with tips. 
This, even though it's got some patina, is a Stanley 161. Now, Stanley made these marking gauges with the curved fences, but the ones that have the model number, the one in front of it, were the ones that were supplied with the fence. I'm, you know, I'm being confusing here, but anyways, this is a pretty uncommon gauge, and it's going to be worth some worth the time and work to get it back into shape. This is signed, but I can't find it. I, the names are partially obscured, but it's a late 18th century, early 19th century hollow plane, a small one, pretty good shape. This is a John Green. If you watched my video on 18th century tools, that's I O H in Green. Uh, York, let's see the mark, there it is. York, England. This is a straight rabbit. Again, the blade's kind of worn on it, but boy, you don't see these very often. Yeah, miscellaneous stuff. Three new old stock chisel handles. Always buy chisel handles. PS and W, half inch firmer. Socket's a little banged up, but the back's not too bad. Another slate hammer. People are starting to get reasonable on those again. Ooh, here we have a treat. Danger, flea market artist at work. Not only did he replace the screw, which happens a lot, but then he painted it with gold paint. There will be some cursing on this one, but that is an 18th century divider, so I'm going to put the time into it. Other hammers. Cobbler's hammer, uh, big old stonemason's hammer. I still get guys that like those, so we'll put some time into it. Sorry if I'm jumping. Another early Stanley bevel square. I don't know how well that one will clean up, but price was right. Uh, Buck Brothers lathe chisel. Somebody ground to do a parting work with, but eh, it can be fixed or turned back into a spindle gouge or whatever. Still got the original handle on it, which is a plus. A Witcher double zero lasting pliers. Uh, these double zero sizes don't show up too often. This one's not in too bad a shape. <clears throat> I'm going to make it look pretty, that's for sure, but again, you don't find too many of these guys around. I know, I sound like a broken record. Boom. 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 Dingelstocks. Pennsylvania, Dutch, or German scythe sharpening anvils. And, you know, maybe one of these days I'll be doing a video on these guys, because I'm about to do, and I do sell a lot of them. Another hewing hatchet head. This one's a plum. Going to have to do some work getting that handle out of it. But the back on this one's actually not too bad. So this one should clean up pretty good, say, for some damage on the pole. And last but not least, a blacksmith hot cut chisel or cold cut chisel or whatever you want to call it. I get in arguments all the time over that. Problem is, if you list it as a cold chisel, then you got to fight with all the many tens of thousands of you know, commercially made handheld cold chisels versus hot cut chisels. So that's why I do it. But that one will clean up okay. Mm, it might be a name on it, but we'll figure it out. Anyways, that's it for this segment. So, and that's all for this video, folks. I hope you enjoyed my little presentation. And a special note goes out. Uh, yesterday, we lost a gentleman by the name of Jim Levy, who was a longtime tool collector and was also a master craftsman who made some gorgeous reproductions of plow planes and other tools as well. He will be missed. As always, thanks for watching, and please hit that subscribe button to be notified when new videos are posted. Bye.